Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 25. In this video we're going to learn about solving systems of linear equations by graphing. So if you previously took an Algebra 1 course, you're fairly familiar with how to solve a system of linear equations with graphing, substitution, and elimination. But for those of you who haven't taken an Algebra 1 course, or you just never ran into this, I can tell you it's a fairly easy topic to understand. So we just start out with looking at one linear equation and two variables. I have y equals 6x plus 3. So it's a linear equation and two variables, and I can graph this on a coordinate plane. So let's just go ahead and do that real fast. So if I have y equals 6x plus 3, graphically, what does that look like? Well, I know at this point it's easy to graph something in slope-intercept form. My y-intercept occurs at 0, 3, so that's going to be right here. And my slope is 6, so I would go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, to the right 1. Or I could go down 6, I could go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I could go to the left 1. So let's go ahead and graph this guy. Okay, so this is the graph for y equals 6x plus 3. So nothing new, we just graphed a linear equation in two variables, no big deal. I want to go back to the previous page, and I want to now take a look at this other linear equation in two variables, and notice how the variables are the same. We have y, we have y, we have x, and we have x. So what happens if I graph this equation on the same coordinate plane? Well, let's take a look. So y equals negative x minus 4. So y equals negative x minus 4. So the y-intercept here occurs at 0, comma negative 4. So that's here. And my slope is now negative 1. Right? It's negative 1. So I would go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, or I could go up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1. So let's go ahead and sketch this graph. So this is the graph for y equals negative x minus 4. I want to bring your attention to something immediately. You notice that this point right here is a point of intersection. So that point occurs at negative 1 for the x value, negative 3 for the y value. So this is negative 1 comma negative 3. That point is significant because it lies on both lines. So let's think about what that means for a second. Each and every point on this blue line here is a solution to y equals 6x plus 3. Each and every point on this green line is a solution to y equals negative x minus 4. So the point of intersection, if it lies on both lines, that means it's a solution to both of them. And therefore, it's a solution to our system of linear equations in two variables. So we revisit our page. And we bring our ordered pair, negative 1 comma negative 3. So these two equations, when we put them together, represent a system of linear equations. Sometimes we'll say a linear system. So if I have y equals 6x plus 3 and y equals negative x minus 4, my goal for a solution for a system of linear equations is to have a solution that works in both of the equations. So would this ordered pair be a solution to each equation? According to our graph, it was. Let's verify. So for this one, I'm going to plug in a negative 3 for y and a negative 1 for x, and I'll see if I get a true statement. I'll have negative 3 is equal to 6 times negative 1 plus 3. So I'll have negative 3 is equal to 6 times negative 1 is negative 6 plus 3. So then negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. So I end up with negative 3 is equal to negative 3. So yeah, it works out here. All right, for the next one, I'm going to plug in a negative 1 for x, and I'm going to plug in a negative 3 for y. So negative 3 is equal to, you have the opposite of negative 1. So the opposite of negative 1, be careful with that sign, then minus 4. So negative 3 is equal to, the opposite of negative 1 is 1. So you'd have 1 minus 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So you'd have negative 3 equals negative 3. So it works out here as well. So we have found a solution for the system 
because this solution here works in both equations. If it works in one, but doesn't work in the other, it's not a solution for the system. So that's why when we're trying to find the solution graphically, I go back to this, we look for the point of intersection because that point lies on both lines and therefore it satisfies both equations and it's a solution for the system. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So the first one was pretty easy because both equations were solved for y. This one is gonna be a little bit more tedious. So for myself, I like everything to be in slope intercept form, just makes it really easy to graph. So I'm gonna solve all the equations for y. So it's gonna say y equals m the slope times x plus b. Because then I have a point on the line and I have the slope, so it's very, very easy to graph things. All right, so let's take this guy and let's solve it for y. So 8y minus 2x equals eight. Let's go ahead and add 2x to both sides of the equation. That'll cancel. We will have 8y is equal to 2x plus eight. Divide both sides of the equation by eight. And what I'm gonna have is, this will cancel with this, y equals two over eight is one fourth. So one fourth times x plus eight over eight is one. So let's write this here. We'll write y equals one fourth x plus one. We'll just draw a little arrow to that and let's erase everything. All right, for this one, we'll start out with three x minus two y equals eight. Let's subtract three x away from each side of the equation. So we know that this is gonna cancel. We'll have negative two y is equal to negative three x plus eight. Let's go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by negative two. So this will cancel, I'll have y is equal to, negative three over negative two is just three halves, times x, eight over negative two is minus four. So now we can write this one as y equals three halves x minus four. So we'll drag this over here. Let me erase everything. Now our two equations are in slope intercept form. That makes them super easy to graph. So let's go to the coordinate plane. We're gonna graph each equation and we're gonna find the point of intersection. So the point of intersection, again, is gonna be our solution for the system. All right, so for the first equation, we have y equals 1 fourth x plus one. So my y-intercept is at zero comma one, and my slope is 1 fourth. So I would go up one to the right, one, two, three, four. Up one to the right, one, two, three, four. Of course, I could also say 1 fourth is the same as negative one over negative four, so I could start from here and I could go down one and to the left four. One, two, three, four. Down one to the left, one, two, three, four. So we all know that two points make a line, but more points will help you to get a more accurate drawing. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch the graph here. All right, so this is the graph. Let me go ahead and label this of y equals 1 fourth x plus 1. Now for the other one, I have y equals 3 halves x minus 4. So the y-intercept occurs at 0 comma negative 4. That's right here. The slope for this one is 3 halves. So go up 3, 1, 2, 3, to the right 2, 1, 2. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, to the right 2, 1, 2. You can see your point of intersection there. Up 3, 1, 2, 3. To the right, one, two. All right, let's go ahead and graph this guy. So again, this is the graph of y equals, you have three halves x minus four. So the main thing here is to look for the point of intersection. That's right here. So that's where we have an x value of four, a y value of two. So the ordered pair four comma two. And why is that significant again? Well, because it lies on both lines. If a point lies on a line, that means it's a solution to that particular equation. So if this one lies on both lines at the point of intersection, it's a solution to both equations, and therefore it's a solution to the system. So let's go back. And again, our ordered pair was four comma two, and we can verify this. So I'd plug in a four for each x and a two for each y, and see if the left and the right sides are equal. So for y, I'm plugging in a two. For x, I'm plugging in a four. Eight times two is 16, minus two times four is eight. 16 minus eight is eight. So this first one checks out. For the second one now, I would have three times for x, I'm plugging in a four, 
minus 2 times for y I'm plugging in a 2, and this should equal 8. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 times 2 is 4. This does, in fact, equal 8. You get 8 equals 8. So this one checks out as well. So we can say that the ordered pair 4, 2 is, in fact, the solution for this system. All right, so now that we looked at two basic problems, I want to kind of get into some special case scenarios. So one scenario you're going to come across is where you have no solution. And then another scenario you're going to come across is where you have an infinite number of solutions. So when we think about the types of problems we're going to encounter, most of the time, or I would say the vast majority of the time, the two lines will intersect at one and only one point. So these are the two examples we just looked at. The system is consistent and the equations are independent. Okay. So the system is consistent. Let me highlight that. System is consistent and the equations are independent. Now, here's one of the special case scenarios. So you'll get this thrown at you all the time too. The graphs do not intersect. The reason for that is these are parallel lines. Remember, parallel lines do not intersect by definition. So if they don't intersect, that means there's not going to be a point that is on both lines and therefore there is no solution for the system. So I have here, these are parallel lines and there is no solution, okay? Now you'll say that this system is inconsistent, okay, inconsistent. Remember the last scenario, we had a system that was consistent. Here there's no solution, so the system is inconsistent. So the final scenario you're gonna deal with is that the graphs are the same line. So in this situation, there are an infinite number of solutions. Now you might say, what do you mean they're the same line? That doesn't make any sense. What's gonna happen is you're gonna start out with two equations that look different. But really it's the same equation that they've algebraically manipulated to look different. And the way you guard against this is you put everything in slope intercept form. That's gonna tell you right away if you have one of these special case scenarios. So if you put everything in slope intercept form, not only are you gonna guard against the special case scenarios, you're also going to be able to graph anything you're gonna deal with very, very quickly. All right, so these equations are said to be dependent. Okay, they're dependent. All right, so let's look at a special case scenario. So we have x plus two y equals six, and we have negative one half x minus y equals negative one. So let's solve each one for y. So for this one, I would say x plus two y equals six. Let's subtract x away from each side of the equation. This is gonna cancel. I'll have two y is equal to negative x plus six. We wanna divide both sides by two. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna cancel with this. I'll have y is equal to, we'll have negative one half x plus six over two is three. Let's erase this real quick. And let's drag this up here. So now let's solve this one for y as well. So we have negative one half x minus y equals negative one. So let me add one half x to both sides of the equation. And I'll continue this up here. This will cancel. I'd have negative y is equal to, you'd have one half x minus one. Now all I need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by negative one. So I can get y by itself, or you can divide by negative one, whatever you want to do. Let's erase all this. So negative one times negative y is y, and this equals negative one times one half x is negative one half x, and then negative one times negative one is positive one. So I wanna erase this and drag this up here, and I want you to observe something. We did a lesson where we talked about parallel lines, and hopefully you remember how you can determine if you have parallel lines. The two lines have the same slope but a different y-intercept. So if I look here, again, if it's in the format of y equals m the slope times x plus b the y-intercept, well, the slope is given as the coefficient of x in each case. And in each case here, I have the same slope, negative one-half and negative one-half. But the y-intercepts are different. Here, the y-intercept would occur at 0, 3. Here, it would occur at 0, 1. So same slope, different y-intercept, parallel lines. So if you're on a test and you solve these for y and you see there's the same slope, different y-intercepts, you can stop and you can put no solution. There's no solution. 
parallel lines will never intersect, so there's no ordered pair that's going to work in this one that also works in this one. Not going to happen. You can also put the symbol for the null or empty set. Now, for the sake of completeness, let's go ahead and graph these so we can see what they look like. For the first one, we have y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So the y-intercept occurs at 0 comma 3. So that's right here. And the slope is negative 1 half. So down 1 to the right 2. Down 1 to the right 2. Or, remember, negative over positive is the same as positive over negative. In the end, it's just negative. So I could put the negative in the denominator, and I could say I could rise 1, go to the left 2. All right, so let me label this guy. This is y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. All right, the next one was y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So the y-intercept for that one will occur at 0 comma 1. And it's got the same slope. So down 1 to the right 2. Down 1 to the right 2. Down 1 to the right 2. Or up 1 to the left 2. So let me go ahead and label this one as well. This is y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. You notice that you have parallel lines here. You can see it. These lines will never, ever, ever intersect. The space between them will always be the same. So we have parallel lines. So for this system, there is, again, no solution. All right, for the next one, we have 3x plus 9y equals 9. And we have x plus 3y equals 3. So again, let me solve each one for y. So if I solve this for y, I would have 3x plus 9y equals 9. Let me subtract 3x away from each side of the equation. And this is going to cancel. We will have 9y is equal to, we have negative 3x plus 9. Let's go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 9. This is going to cancel with this. We'll have y is equal to negative 3 over 9 is negative 1 third. Then times x, 9 over 9 is 1, so plus 1. Let me erase all of this. All right, now let me solve this one for y as well. So we have x plus 3y equals 3. And so I will subtract x away from each side of the equation. That'll cancel. I'll have 3y is equal to negative x plus 3. Divide both sides of the equation by 3. And this will cancel with this. I'll have y is equal to negative x over 3. We can basically say this is negative 1 third x plus 3 over 3 is 1. So let's erase all of this. Let's drag this up here. And what do we notice here? Well, we have the exact same equation. So whatever ordered pair works here will work here. And there's an infinite number of solutions for a linear equation in two variables. So because there's an infinite number of solutions for this guy, and this guy is the same as this guy, there's an infinite number of solutions for the system because the system just contains the same equation twice. Okay, So there's an infinite number of solutions here. So we will say there's an infinite number of solutions.